In this video, I will demonstrate how you can create a table uh, within a SQL Server database uh, using T-SQL. Uh, so I've got this uh, SQL Server instance and um, I'll try to create a table inside uh, this EMS database. Uh, so I will select the uh, SQL Server instance. I will right click it and in the context menu, I can see no new query. I'll select this new query and this will uh, open uh, an editor uh, where I can write some T-SQL and create a table. Uh, now before doing that, I'll have to select uh, the right database. So I will select EMS and now I can write some T-SQL to create a table. So the way you can create a table is uh, you start from this create keyword and then uh, you can write table. Um, and after that, you have to provide the table name. So I want to create a table, let's say employee. And then between these uh, brackets, between the starting and ending brackets, I can supply uh, column names and their types which I want to be included um, in this employee table. So let's begin with just one column and I want to have a column uh, with the name of first name. Uh, so that means that we want to save uh, first names of all the employees uh, inside this column. Um, and after providing the name, we'll have to specify the type of the column. Uh, now, because we want to uh, have uh, save uh, letters inside um, uh, the name field, the first name field, so the type should be varchar. I will explain the types, different types, um, in the later videos. Uh, but uh, for for names and email and all those sort of things where you are dealing with letters or characters or numbers, you should you can use Varchar, and then I'll provide the length. Uh, so I want uh, a maximum of 50 characters to be saved uh, inside this column. And once we have uh, uh, this column definition in place, we can execute uh, this. So I can select this block of code and then I'll execute it. And I can see that the command has su successfully completed. If I open this and if I go and see the tables, I can see that uh, a debut.employee table has been created. Uh, if I want to check the columns I can see that the first column first name column has been created with varchar 50 and uh, now that that seems fine but I want to add another uh, column in uh, this table uh, because this table has already been created we cannot add any extra columns after the creation of table uh, so what we can do is we can uh, drop this table or completely remove this table from the database um, using a drop table command. So we can write drop table and then table name which is employee. And if I select uh, just this line, it will ignore the, the create uh, command and it will just um, uh, consider this drop table command because we've selected only this line of code and if I execute it, it will drop this um, table and if I refresh if I refresh this tables folder what I can see that there is uh, only the uh, only system tables uh, and there's no table with the name of employee so that's all we've got because we've already dropped uh, this employee table so what I can now do is that I can create another column uh, with the name of um, last name and I can give it the same type so now I want not only want to save first name but I also want to save last name uh, so you can create additional columns uh, uh, by separating them uh, using this comma um, so let's add an extra column with the name of ID and what I want to do with this ID column is that I want to save number values integer values inside this ID column so 
in terms of type I've specified the type integer so that we can save um, integer values inside this column now the whole purpose of this column the reason why I've added this column is that this column should be able to identify each of the rows uh, inside the employee table now you can have two employees with the same first name and last name so there should be a unique identifier which will distinguish between two employees and that's the whole purpose of this id table uh, but only with this definition of id uh, we can have a situation where two rows can have uh, same ids uh, we can have uh, the first row with an ID value of 1 and we can have a second row with an ID value of 1 so if we want uh, to make sure that it acts it definitely acts as an identifier and each row within the table have a unique value of ID we can use primary key and that will make it a primary key and the purpose of primary key inside the table is that it uniquely identifies each um, row within a table uh, so if I do that and let's let's select uh, this block of code and execute it again and now if I refresh this table folder I can see that the dbo.employee table has been created again and if I go in the columns folder inside the table I can see that I've got three columns first name last name and ID now you can see that ID is a primary key and that is being indicated by uh, this symbol of key uh, and that indicates that it is a primary key uh, now let me try to end in enter some values inside um, this uh, table so I'll select uh, from this context menu view data and when I'll uh, select the view data I can see uh, the table and I can see all the columns and because we haven't entered any of the information inside these columns uh, we can see null uh, but we can uh, input some information so I can set the first ID uh, the value 1 and then I can say let's say Steve uh, and then I can say I don't know Hayden and in the second row I can again try to enter the same ID value and now if I press tab I'm trying to enter uh, the first name and the last name Mike Johnson let's say Mike Johnson and if I try to do this I can see that uh, SQL Server has made a complaint and it is saying violation of primary key constraint because we have tried to enter the same value in the primary key field and that's why we, we are seeing this error so what I'll do is that I'll quickly go and I will set it to 2 so now we've got unique values for ID and now I can see that it has successfully um, uh, taken this information now if I want to see this is what I've, I've entered in the in the table but if I want to make sure using a SQL query that uh, the table has uh, these values saved inside it so what I can do is that I can use another uh, SQL command which is a select statement and I can say select star so by star what we mean is that we want to uh, view uh, the information inside all the columns uh, uh, within a table and then I can use a keyword uh, called from and then I can provide the table name and if I select this statement and run it what I can see in the output is the table information ID first name last name and then each of the rows highlighting the information which we entered in the first instance